Hello kind people of YouTube and welcome back to another video. Um, in this one I just want to give you a quick little Ripple news dump news update because a couple articles caught my eye today and they're all about them expanding their network of partners about people using their technologies for different applications in different countries. And as you can see, I have three articles open and I'm just gonna go through them one by one and then we'll see what's going on here. As always, if you wanna read these articles yourself, the link is in the description to every single one of these, but let's get it started with um, the first one here from Coindesk. Coin One Exchange launches cross-border payments app with Ripple Tag. South Korea-based crypto exchange Coin1 has officially launched Cross, a remittance app utilizing Ripple's ex-current product to facilitate speedy cross-border payments. Ripple announced on Monday that Coin1's payment subsidiary Coin1 Transfer is now formally releasing the app, which has been under development for months, to the public. It aims to provide unbanked or underbanked individuals the ability to transfer funds from South Korea to Thailand or the Philippines at low cost. Coin1 will be working with Siam Commercial Bank in Thailand and a financial institution called Cebuana Luilea. I completely butchered that name, I'm so sorry, in the Philippines to get funds to customers. Further, Cross users will be able to transfer funds directly to any recipient with a bank account in Thailand through the Prompt Pay application, which is powered by Mastercard. The new app will fill a growing need for cross-border remittances, Ripple noted, Thai and Filipino individuals make up two of the largest groups of immigrants in South Korea, which saw $17 billion worth of remittances into and out of the country in 2017. So here we see another application of Ripple's products in East Asia, Southeast Asia, well, Korea, of course, East Asia, but the other country, Southeast Asia. This is a market that they have been going for hard and that makes a lot of sense because um, as this article briefly notes, a lot of people in that area of the world are underbanked or completely unbanked. Meaning that a lot of people do not have access or do not have a traditional financial, um, a traditional bank account, cannot just send money easily across borders. And currently when, when say they're living in say they're working in a country, in a foreign country to them. Say Filipinos working in South Korea because they make, a, they make a better wage there and they want to send money back to their family to support them. Currently, what a lot of them are doing is they use, they use expensive, slow services like, what are they called, like Western Union, that um, where you have to spend a lot of money just to send a relatively small amount, where fees can easily go to 10% or even more and even if you were just going to use traditional bank transfers, that can get expensive. But a lot of these people do not even have a bank account and have to use um, have to use essentially cash sending um, cash sending companies. And those are expensive. Those are really really expensive. And when when you've already moved to another country to make a better living because the conditions in your home country are not that great, you don't want to have to pay those fees. So that is essentially the the audience, the user base that they are going for here, essentially aimed at foreign workers, at um, at migrant workers who want to send money back home and similar situations. And that is a very big market noted here, $17 billion worth of remittances into and out of South Korea in 2017. Now those aren't all Thai and Filipino, Filipino from what I can tell here, that seems to be the general overall number, but that is still a lot of money. And if if just a small part of that can run through Ripple's technologies. In this case, it is currently XCurrent, which does not by default use the XRP token. But keep in mind, and I keep saying this in all my videos about Ripple, their strategy is to onboard companies by getting them to use XCurrent first, uh, first before moving them onto XRapid, which uses the XRP token. And anything that has been in development for longer than a couple of weeks is almost certain to use XCurrent because XRapid just went live in October. So anything that was already in development before October is almost certainly being developed with XCurrent in mind. So don't get too discouraged by seeing a lot of these things using XCurrent. A, XRapid is still very new and anything that, and products that take months to develop don't necessarily have XRapid support, weren't necessarily developed with XRapid in mind. And B, this is very much Ripple's strategy, get them to use XCurrent and then move them on to either using the XRP token with XCurrent, which is a possibility, or get them to use XRapid entirely. But this is the first one. 
we actually have another payment corridor going live and this one is for Indian remittances. Currency's Direct is to open a new real-time cross-border remittances corridor to India using Ripple's X-Current. Using X-Current, banks and financial institutions message each other in real-time to confirm payment details before initiating transactions and to confirm delivery once it settles. It includes a rulebook to provide operational consistency and legal clarity for every transaction. Customers are able to track their payments at every stage, from the moment money leaves their account to when it lands in the recipient's account. Vivek Avasti, I probably mispronounced that, I'm very sorry, Chief Information Officer at Currencies Direct said, Our partnership with Ripple showcases the future of international payments and how technology can greatly improve the customer experience. When you think about the vast volumes of money that are being transferred around the world and to India specifically, it's only right that customers have the ability to check the status of their funds at every stage. Whether you're a consumer, sole trader, financial director or controller, people always want to have visibility of their money and we see Xcurrent as a game changer for payments. That is... <laughs> they're going big here, a game changer. But they're bringing up a good point here. Ripple's technologies have the kind of transparency that we don't typically see in the financial world. Um, typically, it is very hard to tell what exactly is going on with a payment. Um, even banks themselves sometimes don't have the full picture of what is happening with payments that are being processed by them. So anything that is blockchain-based, anything that uses new technologies, as all of Ripple's products do, anything that is DLT-based will have a lot more transparency and a lot more security than traditional payments. So it's not just faster. A lot of people talk about cryptocurrencies just in terms of them being faster. That is not the only thing. Cryptocurrencies, um, using a blockchain to process a payment using a token is not only faster and cheaper than the traditional methods that we have. It's also more secure, it's more transparent, it's immutable and it's, um, it gives equal access to everyone involved to verify the information. Those are massive, massive improvements, especially when you're dealing with large amounts of money or when you're dealing with contract disputes, when you're dealing with partners who no, don't necessarily trust each other. There is a level of trust in cryptocurrency transactions, in blockchain transactions, that you do not have in other transactions. And that is actually one of the core things that makes them so interesting. Because traditional financial companies have been developing faster technologies as well in response to the advent of cryptocurrencies because they feel the pressure. That's why you see Swift developing their Swift GPI. But a lot of them, some of them get close to the speed and cost point of cryptocurrencies. None of them have been able to quite reach it, but some of them get close enough. But what none of them have managed to do is have the same transparency, have the appeal of a decentralized network that no one person controls, where all the information is clearly visible for anyone who, who needs to be able to see them, where nobody can mess with the data. That is something that distributed ledger technologies have that other things do not. And that is why Ripple's technologies amongst others are so interesting in the financial world. They, pretty much anyone involved benefits from using these technologies instead of what we currently use. And so even, even if scaling and speed and price weren't an issue, there would still be good reasons to use them. And Ripple is pretty much front and center in making sure these technologies get used in the traditional financial world for international transfers, for payments, for remittance, for liquidity. And with that, once again, here we see another partnership using Xcurrent. But like I said, anything that has been in the works for months is likely to use Xcurrent because XRapid has not been available yet. Generally, you develop for the tech that is available. And if you want to, um, if you want to use Xrapid, you will update your technology accordingly or you will switch over at another point. And India, of course, is also a quickly developing market. Of course, absolutely huge, um, over a billion people in India, a lot of them also unbanked or underbanked, but that is changing quickly, especially in the large cities. So there is a massive, there is a massive crowd of people there that are not really integrated in banking properly and cryptocurrencies can help change that. And this, once again, another very intelligent group for Ripple to aim at. But last but not least, we've known for a while that American Express is involved with Ripple with using their technologies. They have done some testing now. 
Whipple is getting a lot more hot these days. We ported recently American Express or Amex, employing XCow in one of Whipple's products. Accordingly, the firm has already gone through the prior testing and sa is satisfied with the positive outcome. Forbes earlier reported that the American Express, which is uh, that American Express, which is the multinational financial service corporation, is introducing Whipple blockchain for transferring funds to businesses located in the UK. They really need an editor on this website. Oh my God, there are so many mistakes in here. <laughs> Sorry. However, the firm has successfully completed its testing phase and unveiled Ripple's potential for their international payments. At the Wings of Change Euro conference in Madrid, Amex's general manager for corporate payments, Carlos Carriodo, claimed that they have partnered with Ripple and Santander, a local bank, to streamline the international payments with Ripple Technologies. And um, I already read out some of this in another video a couple days ago, but I just felt it was good to round out this video today. Because I just wanna, I just wanna make you guys see how much is going on with Whipple, how many companies they're partnering with, how many of those are major companies or are even companies you have likely heard of before, how happy they are using Whipple's technologies, like we see here, uh, very transparent and seamless, a test uh, with Ripple for cross-border transactions that they're very, very happy with, uh, happy with Apple. This is, this is such an exciting time to be a supporter of Ripple and, by, and of their XRP token. Because while it is absolutely true that most of the partnerships they currently have are using the X current protocol, which, keep in mind, it can use the XRP token. It doesn't have to, but it can. Ultimately, what is more important here is that everything is going perfectly to set up Ripple in a position where they can get more and more companies, more and more banks, more and more financial, um, financial corridors using their XRP token in the future. And that is really what their business strategy is all about. They offer XCurrent, but ultimately the goal is almost never to have a company use XCurrent. The goal is to get companies into Ripple's ecosystem, into Ripple's technologies, into the space that Ripple have built up with their technological offerings, with their products. And once companies are in there, they are likely to stay in there. And once they're in there, you can move them on to something like XRapid, which always uses the XRP token for liquidity, where every transfer is done with the XRP token, where the token is bought and then an equivalent amount of the token is sold elsewhere. That is massive movement in the XRP markets for any for anything that happens on, on XRapid. And that is ultimately their goal. They are building up a massive international network of hundreds of companies and they're getting them into the Ripple ecosystem. And usually they're getting them in there with XCurrent because XCurrent is their most proven, it is their, most, um, it is their oldest, it is their most well-established and it's the safest bet for companies to start with. But once all of these companies are happy with XCurrent, and once they hear more and more from the few companies that are using XRapid already, that they're happy with XRapid, Ripple is going to push that hard and they're going to upsell them to use XRapid as well because XRapid does have further advantages. XRapid is even cheaper. So that is the plan here. And um, one of the common arguments against XRP is that, um, oh, Ripple might have a lot of, um, might be working with a lot of companies, but they're all using XCurrent, so it means nothing. This is their business plan. XRapid just went live less than two months, or not less than two months, pretty much exactly two months ago. XRapid just went live. Of course, all of these companies aren't going to be using XRapid yet. That is a product that ju was just released on the market, and a lot of these are partnerships that have been going on for months or even years that have been getting their products ready for much longer than XRapid has been on the market. A, they weren't able to properly integrate XRapid yet because XRapid simply wasn't out. You, you're more likely to work with a technology that's already available that you can properly test, that you can properly work with. And B, they're simply waiting to see what the consensus on how good XRapid actually is will be in a year or two. When more companies have been using it for a while, when it's been properly tested, when we can know for sure that there's no major bugs or weaknesses in it. So that is everything going according to plan. All these companies using XCurrent, that is not an argument against XRP. That is an argument for XRP. 
you just need to look at the long term strategy here. You need to, this is a big problem in the crypto world where people are only looking at the now or at what will happen in the next couple of days or weeks. That is why everyone is so obsessed with end of year predictions. I honestly couldn't care less which price XRP or any cryptocurrency will have at the end of this year. One thing I know for sure is it's not going to be $589. But um, I don't care if XRP goes up or down until the end of 2018. What I do care about is watching closely what Ripple is doing. The, the genius of their system, their how successful they have been in building more and more partnerships with huge companies around the globe. Their network is growing pretty much every single day. And this is all preparation for ultimately products using the XRP token. And we don't see immediate results here, but we see what they're building for the future. And for me, this is a lot more interesting than a lot of things that are happening immediately in the crypto markets right now or where the markets are going in the next couple of days. Because this I know is real. This is building the framework for something big in the future. This is everything aligning for XRP to become absolutely commonplace in international finance, in international monetary transfers in the future. And that excites me. That is incredibly exciting. And it's a privilege to be living in this time. And anyone who doesn't get in now will probably look back with regret in the future. So this video, I made it to let you guys see. I could make a video like this every three or four days because there's so much going on. So many partnerships, so many products launching using Ripple's technologies, so many people involved with companies that have tri trialed their products, talking positively about them. Ripple is doing so much. And a lot of it, when you just see it individually, it seems small, it seems insignificant. But if you try to look at the larger context, all of these are small puzzle pieces that all come together and they build something spectacular. And with that, I'm going to end this video. As always, thank you so much for watching. Um, if you're not subscribed to me already, you should change that. I just hit 2000 subscribers. Thank you guys so much. That is insane. That is insane. This channel is just four months old. I can't believe I'm at 2000 subscribers. So thank you guys for that. Um, if you want to read these articles yourself, links in the description. In the description, you will also find ways to support this channel monetarily and any any dollar is appreciated. If you don't want to or can't support me monetar monetarily, I really appreciate any likes or comments on any of my videos. I know you hear this from every single YouTuber, but that is because they seriously matter. Um, if you've looked any into how the YouTube algorithms work, how YouTube decide which videos to advertise to people, which to suggest to people, a lot of it comes down to how long people watch that video. So the longer people watch the video, the better if they leave a like and if they leave a comment. So leaving likes and comments really, really helps me. Always appreciate it. And with that, I'm going to let you guys go for now. I'll be back with another video tomorrow. Thanks for watching.